and then I'm going to uh, I'm going to make Lana the host. And so anything that you don't want to say or be heard, can you not say it? Because we're now handing over and going into the deep stuff. So over to you then, Lana. All right. So let, let's let's go back to basics. Let's start. We're going to construct a blog post this evening. It's not going to be a long one, but at least you can see step by step what the process is. So I want you to imagine that you have already written a paragraph or something around an area of interest. So can I have a willing volunteer, please? I'm scrolling up because I can't get all the screen pictures on. So I don't know who's, it's where am I? Debbie, right, Debbie. Okay, Debbie, can you tell me um, what kind of paragraph is in your head in respect of writing a blog post. Just give me kind of three words that would sum up what you're trying to convey in your blog post. Four, emotional health after divorce. Okay. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to our friend Google. Okay, now if you remember, a couple of weeks ago when we looked at the difference of paid ads and organic traffic and we were in yep. the organic traffic brigade and we looked at um, Google as our first port of call and you can see it's obviously got an area of interest because we've already got um, something up here that's quite high ranking but the bit that we're interested in is this bit here people also ask okay and these are the questions that people have typed into Google in order to get the answers. So um, if we scroll down the rest of the page, you can get a sense of some of the words that are coming up, <clears throat> excuse me, in relation to that thing. And look at the bottom, these are related searches. Okay, so these are also the types of keywords that you should also be writing down because these are ones that you can sprinkle into your blog post. Okay, so if Debbie was, start, was looking at emotional health after divorce, the thing that she should be thinking about would be blog post title. What are the emotional effects of divorce? OK, because she's already managed to get a keyword in her title of her blog. OK, makes sense so far? Yeah. So if we then go up to um, posts, for example, so I'm going to create a post. And we know that the title, so I'm in my WordPress and I'm going to just use Block Editor. Lana, before we move on, yeah, can you say a little bit about uh, Neil Patel? And well, I'm going to come on to him next, Cheryl. I just want to get the title in, and then we'll move into the next bit, which is the Neil Patel stuff. But we we know that what are the emotional effects of divorce is going to rank because that is a related search. It's already being looked for. Okay, so that's what we're going to do as our title. The at is FX, isn't it? Is it FX or FX? Or e, yeah. Um, FX is after, E is in the, the process. Process, right. Now, you might notice this little green thing here. Um, I've added to my WordPress Grammarly because when I get writing quick, I oh, well. tend to I tend to just flow, but I don't necessarily have it in proper grammatical structure. And I would suggest that you have something similar um, to enable you to kind of just keep a clock. And also it sorts out your spelling errors for you as you're going along, okay? So that's something to be aware of um, when you're doing your, um, when you're doing your um, blog post. I just want to check something because there's something on here that should be here that isn't. Yes, it is. 
Okay, so and if you can see on the post um, on the top right corner of my WordPress, you will see this rank math. So this is a free plugin that you can get if you're on WordPress. There's also, um, there's two others. There's also Yoast um, and there's also one called something Weaver and I've forgotten the name of it, but I can pop that in the chat once I remember. <laughs> Um, I started using Yoast and it was good. Um, I moved to Rank Math because I actually find it a bit, bit more, you know, straightforward with what I need to do for it. And if I click on it, you can see um, it's already telling me where there are things. So, for example, add a focus keyword to the title. Make sure the focus keyword appears in the title and in your, your content as well as in your paragraphs. So we know that that does work because we know that we've had a look at Google and it is a related search that people are looking for. So that's the first thing is you can very easily create your title just by looking at what are people asking and then what are the related searches. All right. The next step then is to take that over to Ubersuggest because we want to have a look at how it's doing. So Ubersuggest is the original name of this um, search, um, search site. I would imagine a lot of you already know this information. So I'm just gonna go kind of quite speedily through, but it basically, it was purchased by Neil Patel. It's now Neil Patel's. It used to be free, unlimited. It, is, it does now have a pricing structure. I think you can do three keyword searches, um, I think every day um, for free. And then obviously there's a pricing structure. So I would suggest for this to start out, just get used to just doing it first and foremost. When you become, you know, really fast at, you know, putting out um, blog posts, then it would be worth your while investing in the, the price. Pricing, I think it's like sort of $10 or something a month or something like that. Let's have a quick look. Uh, $29 from a month if you're uh, using it as an individual. So, and I would suggest that, you know, when, just once you get really going with it, it is worth your while to think about doing that. So we're going to have a look at emotional health after divorce. Now with this, you can put in either a, 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 um, a website so you can look at what your, your competitors are ranking for. So if you know that one of your competitors is also writing blogs in this arena, you can actually look at them and what kind of keywords they're using for themselves. Um, but we're going to have a look and see how this is doing at the moment for ranking. Um, and so here we go. Here's the keywords. I'm just doing its little thing. And you'll see over on the left hand side, you've got your um, dashboard settings, your analyzer, your overview, some of the ideas you can have, content ideas. And basically, as you go up, the, that's when things you start paying for the service that this offers. But in terms of the keywords, let's have a look. Okay, so we know that. Uh, you're aiming for keywords um, that are kind of around sort of between 10 and, and 40. That's the kind of area. And the, this is to sort of look at, if you go here, it will give you um, a summary. This is the type of competition that you're likely to experience. So other people using these keywords, that's the sort of type of competition you'll get when you use them, okay? So the higher the number in this box, the more competitive your keyword is for ranking, okay? Now I would suggest when you're starting out, just go anything above 10 is okay and just work your way through slowly but surely. There's two reasons for that. If you keep to the lower end, when you start blogging, it can feel a bit like you haven't quite got all the pieces of the puzzle together. So you can get your proficiency by going for low ranking keywords, but also when those keywords are then put into Google, yours will be the quickest response because you'll, you'll have written about it. 
So, you know, don't, don't dismiss it just because it's got a low ranking, because sometimes you find that, you know, if you wrote something obscure about, I don't know, how alpacas deal with stress in the desert, and that's your title, and then somebody just happens to buy an alpaca farm and thinks, oh, we're in the desert, I wonder how that, and they Google it, yours are going to be the first, <laughs> first on the page, might not be the most you know, you know, common, but it will certainly get, get a high ranking for it. So let's have a look at these keywords. So we've got mental health and divorce law, mental health and divorce method. Can you divorce someone with mental health? Mental health after divorce. Can you divorce a mentally ill person? How to fight depression after divorce? How to divorce someone with, with, with um, mental illness? Now, I would say that the one actually that's probably most relevant that, that will be is how to fight depression after divorce. Because think about the context of the blog post. We're looking at what are the emotional effects. So that particular keyword sits quite nicely or that statement. And remember when we did the session a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the long tailed, um, your long tailed rather than your short tailed. Long tail was about being very specific. So you could put cupcakes or you could put cupcakes for people with diabetes. And that long tail may narrow the field, may narrow, but it's niching you down. And it means that you, although there'll be less people looking for it, those that are looking for it, you'll get a consistent hit. Make sense so far? Yeah, if I'm if I'm starting to kind of make not make sense, just put your hand up and, and shout because I don't want you know I want you to go away knowing you can get a really decent blog post out of this. So I would suggest that that um, would be the keyword that we like from here. Um, we can also go into some related. So there's emotional health after divorce. It's got a low one, but not necessary difficulty. There's nothing connected to questions around it. There's nothing about prepositions and there's nothing, there's a few about comparisons. So you can look at a potentially a comparative blog post where you're looking at, well, you know, how do you mentally deal with divorce? Okay, so that's another keyword we want to put in. So that might be our subheading, you know, how do you mentally deal with divorce? Because we put the, the title as what are the emotional effects? A subheading of that might be, you know, how do we deal with divorce? So if we just go across for a block, where's my blocks gone for my paragraph? Um, oh, that's the wrong one. That's to do with a dog. <laughs> I was hoping I could get away with a copy and paste. So how to deal with depression after divorce? Um, okay, so this could be a paragraph. Or it could be that you put your, your statement saying, so let's have a look at the emotional effects of divorce and let's start with three key areas, how to deal with depression after divorce. There's keyword one. You might then want to put in the, the comparative uh, question, um, how to mentally deal with divorce. So you can look at them as both questions within your blog post as well, okay? And you would just create them as, you know, subheadings. Um, let's just change the title on that. You, would you can change that as a subheading. And then from that, then you can move on to your actual next part of your paragraph, okay? And, and that's pretty much how you, you build it. So you keep, you, you do your writing, you go over to have a look at Google to get your kind of main keywords that people are looking for. You then check on Ubersuggest to see, is there movement with these keywords? Is there enough people that are paying attention to it? And therefore I, can, I know I can make use of them in my post. Now, as you'll see on the top right hand corner now, we've gone from a rank of one, we now moved up to seven. 
and just by adding in that that particular keyword and you, and your aim is to actually get to 80 when you so this is like a traffic like system on rank math slightly different on yoast um, but essentially your job is to hit 80 and this is where i have to say you can get a little bit competitive because if i was to take you back let me just go back to uh, my dashboard so you can see, for example, some of mine I've not done very much to. That's a draft. I haven't finished writing it yet, but I'm only at 13. This one has got to 79. I'm one off. So I know that even though I've published this, I can go back in and slightly tweak after it's been published to get it up to the magic 80. If I look down here, I've got 81. Dun, dun, dun. And that's when it all gets really exciting. And you can see now there are some that I haven't done that I need to go back to. Um, and there are some that are quite low. So we've got this one into the amber. It's a red, amber, green system. Um, some of them, again, haven't gone, you know, haven't yet done. Some of these are actually videos, so I haven't actually set those properly <clears throat> but you can you can see from rank math what it offers you in terms of it keeps you on track so if we were to go back to the post and i've got a horrible feeling now i just came out of that and didn't save it um so if we just go back in is that going to show me it as a draft probably not i think i just left the page didn't i um so okay so we'll go back in but if we were to go back to And then we can add in that um, paragraph. So, um, oops. Okay, and then we can go back to putting that subtitle question, which was, um, so how do you deal with depression? Um, so this could be a bullet. Um, can, can you see the numbers just creeping up slowly, but surely? So let's see if we can find another one. Um, Uh, how does my mental health? See, this one's quite low, so I'd probably tend not to go with that one. But let's have a look at the 10. So we've got that one. Um, that one would be quite good, but it might not be the right blog post to put it in, but it might be related blogs that you put in at a later stage. Um, okay, so we've got that. What would be another thing that you might put in that actual post, Debbie? So you've got the emotional effects. What would be another key area that you would want to explore in that, that post? Oh, so, oh, oh sorry. <laughs> um, I would also say about uh, physical health effects. Okay, so let's then go back to um, here and let's have a look at the physical health effects. Okay, look, there we go. We've got some more here. Can, how does divorce affect women's health? So if you're working predominantly with women, that would be a really good question that you put in your blog post. Can divorce make you sick? Does divorce cause psychological harm? Um, and then if we look at the related, there are physical effects of divorce. So that's a good keyword. So if we go into here and we just look at the physical, and remember with this, you can actually download it as a CSV file, uh, which means that what I do is I print mine off so that I've got literally an A4 folder so when I write something, I then go to my folder and think, right, okay, there's only keywords that relate to this. So I don't have to keep coming back into this every day. Um, but it's up to you how you, you know, want to work it. 
you might just want to come in every day and have a quick look at the keywords. Um, so let's have a look. So we've got divorce on child, effects of divorce on children, how divorce can affect you physically. So we know that one's ranking. That's actually ranking. Um, let's just have a look uh, how divorce affects you. So that's a, a number eight. So that's not too bad. It's not too competitive. Um, Oops. And then you might want to look at another another area. What would be another area, Debbie? The other one would be finances. Finances, okay. So they're the three big things with divorce, aren't they? Okay, financial effects after divorce. Now, it might feel a bit long-winded how I'm doing it, but remember, some of this you'll have already written because it's your area of interest. And the thing is, you're actually going searching for the appropriate keywords to connect in with what you've written, rather than from scratch looking for a keyword in order to create a, a blog post. So, um, so look, that one's we know that there's some results there. How does it force... A divorce affect you financially can how do you survive financially after divorce how long does it take to recover how much should they give you after divorce financial effects financial problems so you can see there's a lot of related searches in relation to this so if we take the one uh that one for example drop that into here Okay, so yes, we've still got some that are ranking quite well. How will I survive financially after divorce? Um, okay, so here are the three areas. You're going to put those as bullets. Okay, and now I've got to find my bullets, <laughs> which I can't find at the moment, so we'll forget them for a minute. And then you go into that then becomes your title, your subheading for that particular paragraph and go back and have a look. Are there any other elements there that you can add into an existing sentence to an existing paragraph? That means that you're sort of sprinkling in. So it might be um, so that you've got this one. How do you survive financially after divorce? So if you get to this bit, it might be that, so you might be thinking, um, thinking, it might help if I could spell, how do, how do you survive after divorce? Well, here are several, um, several ways in which that can occur. And then you might wanna list what they are. So can you see that you're very slowly but surely building up? Now, what you'd be seeing is that we've kind of got static now in terms of the number. Now, this will obviously go up with the more content that you have in your blog. And the sort of ideal area for you to be focusing on for your blog is around the 650 uh, word mark okay anything less than that um and you know it will be problematic right cheryl i've got suzanne smart is has entered the waiting room you let her in yeah okay there we go so basically you do your construction of your your post and you see where your your rank comes so far and once you've done that you can see with this is obviously rank math you can see there are snippets here that you can preview and you can actually change these and so once we've written what we've wanted to write we then focus our attention on these bits okay so can you see that I am not going to achieve this bit tonight because I need to have a minimum of 600 words now because I've written 64 words. But once I hit the 650, that goes to a little green tick and goes, hooray, you've achieved it, boom. 
Uh, using focus keywords in the content. So again, we need to sprinkle it with more of the keywords that we've been looking through in both Google and Ubersuggest and add those into our, you know, our text um, so that our, you know, blog is having some meat and context to it. Um, the URL, so this will be the page, so you can see at the moment, if you look at the URL as it sits, it's a pretty, pretty mishmashy one because it hasn't yet been saved and it hasn't been published. So we would need to pay attention to the URL and then, you know, we basically go through each of these elements. So if I go through to the snippet, for example, you can see that this is what's happening at the moment with it, okay? So I might want to have a look at um, changing this to um, the actual, um, so I wanna, if I put in what are the emotional effects. Right, you can see that I've got out of a title and it measures it out of 60 characters, but I've got 42 out of 60. So it's okay. It could be better, but it's okay. So at the moment, I'm kind of happy with that. That's okay. So I might want to change the URL. So I might want to put and see if that's going to get me anything further. <clears throat> so at the moment, that's not. So I might want to have a look at, um, um, let's have a look at financial. Um, yes, divorce. No, it's pretty much staying the same. So I'm going to take it back to emotional effects because at the moment um, it's not making a massive difference. Okay, so we'll just leave it there. But then the description, so we've got 160 uh, words that we can put. We've only got 118 at the moment. And if I put my little Grammarly on, let's see, is, is it telling me I need to do anything amazing? At the moment, it's, there's no particular suggestions for it. So that's okay. But we might want to put, if you've been thinking about the effects you haven't, here are three areas to focus on. Um, now, I want to change that, so I might want to put, um, if you think about the emotional, um, if, you, if you are thinking emotional effects of divorce, including the physical, and financial difficulties you might experience um, read here to discover how to avoid them, okay? So it just means, can you see we've got to a full, um, you know, green light on that. So it enables us to say, right, okay, that snippet, I'm happy with that snippet. So, because remember, quite often this snippet will be the first thing that people are going to see when it's in Google, when it's when you're, they're searching, okay? Because they're not gonna be going directly to your blog. They'll just be seeing the summary of that blog. And you want to have a little bit of control over what they're reading. Um, and essentially, you'll just go through those areas. OK, you go into additional. So can you see our link? We've already we've sorted our link out now. So we know that our URL is pretty OK. We've got our little green tick. The keyword density is high. Now, when it goes, when it says this, it says you've got too many keywords too close together in the current post. We know that because I've just put them in and I haven't 
fluffed it out or buffered it with anything else. So that would be a case of, okay, so I need to add some more little bits and pieces in order to separate out these um, keywords so that it reads more naturally and it's not too content heavy with those keywords. Because if, if it's too keywordy, Google will go, oh, no, like that. You, you know, you could be a bot and you could be an automatic, you know, thing and not a real human that's actually writing this. So they, they do look out for that. Link to resources. So we could put, so say, for example, Debbie has written a previous post and it could be, so if you have read my, my earlier or previous blog on, what was the title? What would the title be on a previous? Um, family health after divorce. Okay, on family health after divorce. Which you can get from here. And then you would add that here as your link back to your previous blog, one back link in. Boom, got it? Okay, um, and then you'd be, you would see that blah, blah, blah. Okay, so say you want to attract, I don't know, give me a, give me a magazine that um, might be a trade or a professional magazine that you connect up with. No, apologies. Okay. Um, so... Uh, I mean, you wouldn't keep putting so's in, but you want it sort of fairly informal. It just depends on your writing style. But remember, it's got to be informal enough that people want to engage with it and not so formal, it becomes a barrier. Um, so um, what I discovered was a really helpful technique. Uh, was that um, talking therapy can be utilised successfully. I'm making this up as I go along. Utilised successfully to help your emotional balance. Um, this technique Um, was just uh, explored in depth in this month's oh, it might help if I could find my, my thing uh, Psychologies Magazine put the link over Magazine oh, look at it, Magazine and then you would hyperlink that to the Psychologies magazine. That's your link forward. So remember we talked about referral forward so that if you want them to start tagging you in in future, mm. you know, make the comment. You know, they, they, you know, you might get a, a, a little mention in their next online edition saying, oh, you know, have a look at um, Debbie Richin's blog on, you know, emotional effects. Etc. Or they might even just put something on their social media saying, thanks, Debbie, for the connection. You just don't know. But the, if you put it in, there's a fighting chance that they will um, rather than you just not. And then they might not see this, you know, ever. So, um, so that's one way to sort of do your backlink with your previous um, blog post. There's your, your, your referral linkage, which well, I think is becoming more important as we're going through because more and more people now are seeing the value of being able to sort of make those connections for people very quickly because if you like you know I don't know if you like me but I like to be able to read something if it says you know and click here and, and then the example I've got is actually the one that if I save this uh, the one that I haven't yet finished um, so this one for example uh, and you're going to look at the title and think, what on earth is this woman on? Because um, what a title this is. When you don't have that rescue goat with anxiety, 
who only calms down in her duck costume, here's what to do instead. Now, you might be thinking, why on earth did she pick a title like that? Blimey. But, well, you may have seen the article about the baby goat called Polly, who experiences a lot of health problems and anxiety. Her fur mum, Leanne. So these link back to the original blog and the original author. So it's a nod to them whilst I'm being able to, if you like, piggyback off their, um, you know, the, their popularity, if you like, on that specific blog. So you can be creative. I'm not stealing her stuff or her thunder because I'm putting acknowledgements in and I'm actually bringing you back to have a look at the article itself. But I am saying, well, that's to do with anxiety. My clients have got anxiety. This has a kind of connection here. So we're just going to be a little bit creative with it. There's my keyword because I know that that's in there. Um, those are the, the techniques. That's another set of keywords. You can see it's on, it's, it still needs a lot of work to it, but there are some elements in there that have already been achieved. Um, so don't be afraid of utilizing um, that kind of stuff because it, it you can, you know, use it to leapfrog off of other pieces of work, provided you give the appropriate attribution. You know, otherwise you might be getting a, you know, a cease and desist letter. So it's, it's really important. Um, and pretty much that's all you would do. So you'd edit your snippet uh, and, and you might sort of think, okay, so let's have a think to see if there are any other keywords I can be using in this post that will increase my ranking. So let's put um, financial uh, effects of divorce. Um, now, can you see it's come up with divorce statistics? If we go here, now you can see it hasn't really changed my ranking. So it's not really something I'm gonna use. Um, and in this one, you kind of have to get a little bit creative and playful. So you need to try out these different keywords to make your focus um, because that's the keyword you're going to rank for. OK, so if, for example, Debbie wants to rank for financial survival after divorce, you need to be looking at playing with those keywords so that they come connected to the words finance mm -hmm. or financial if you're looking at depression, so for example, <clears throat> let's see if the focus keyword goes up a bit. Okay, so depression after divorce, there we go, bum, up to 16 already. So can you see that you just have to play with this to, what, to see how far up the rankings you can get with the keyword that you want to focus on. So if we just have a look at physical effects, so remember depression after divorce, if we look in here at physical, okay, on adults, that's the closest we've got. No, not no, it's still at seven. There's not sufficient difference to increase it. So we know that the depression one is going to get you in a better ranking position. Um can't remember what the actual keyword was. I would suggest you write these down before you kind of keep changing them because sometimes it can get a little bit like, oh, um, but boom, we're back up to 16. OK, so, you know, allow Rank Math to do the work for you or Yoast if you're using Yoast. And your task then, after you've written, is literally just work your way through where it's telling you the errors are. Then it's telling you where the addition. Now, you can see, for example, um, we haven't, we've got these subheadings, but the focus keyword isn't in. So what we might want to do is with this one, um, go back to our focus keywords. So we've got depression after divorce is in there, but we didn't create it as a header. Okay. Um, these are actually bullets, but you would use that as your header. 
Okay, and then that means that the focus keyword then gets shown in your header. Uh, readability, you know, it, again, it doesn't appear at the beginning of the title. So we could now change the title if you wanted to have um, is depression, we could say is depression one of the emotional effects of divorce. Um, so if, let's see what happens if we change it. Um, okay, let me do its thing. So at the moment, not really, hasn't really made much of a difference here. Um, you can see though that um, our keyword density is picked up, but we're okay because we've dropped our density down. Remember that was really high when we started. Um, and then you can just look down. So table of content, I'll be honest, I never use it. I'm always going to have an error on my blog post because I never use a table of content in them. I only see table of contents really for longer versions. So when you've got something that's only about 650 words, I don't see the point. You might be different. There might be a good reason for doing that, in which case, you know, I'm happy to be persuaded. <laughs> and you know think about whether you need to use it you're using short paragraphs now one of the things with blogging is that it's slightly different and i got caught short with this because i used to write a lot academically and your sentences and your paragraphs tend to be that little bit bigger blogging is very much about keeping your paragraphs as short as possible so you should be aiming the rule of thumb, I don't know if it's still the case, but certainly when I first started looking at how to blog, the rule of thumb is that there should be a maximum of half an inch, um, sort of long, if you like. So if you put your, thing, your little thumb up against it and it hits the knuckle, anything below the knuckle is actually too long for the paragraph on a blog post. So just think about every three or four sentences, um, no more than four sentences maximum for each paragraph. But again, do that afterwards. Don't get caught up with all this to start with. Otherwise you'll look at it and think, oh my God, that feels like such hard work and it's going to take me forever. And, uh. and the <sighs> it won't. Get, get your writing first get your interest first, then go to see your keywords and all of that. And then you can start building up your page. And as you get more used to doing it, you'll get more intuitive around the ranking and you'll start seeing that your rankings are moving up quick. So that's pretty much it. Any questions? <laughs> Could we come off share screen now and do a Q&A with everyone so um, people can get their questions answered. So uh, welcome uh, Sue who's joined us. So uh, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm going to work my way around everyone. So I'm going to come to you, um, Lara, first. Um, do you have a question, Lara, because th this is quite might, might be quite new to you because you've got a WordPress site, but have you downloaded this software? So no. if you have a question, would you like to ask a question? Yes, th thank you. Thank you, Lana. Really, really interesting, <laughs> a lot to learn. Um, so clearly the first thing to do is to download the Divi and then download the, the these are the plugins, aren't they? Yeah, you don't need Divi for blogging. So you can use, so weirdly, I have Divi theme on, well, cause you know, cause you see my website. So I have Divi, I have Divi theme on my website, but for blogging, I'm just using the basic WordPress, the Gutenberg block. Um, and that just- there. That will already be there. That's okay. already there. So the, the rank math, what do you do? Do you just Google rank math and it- No, you go into WordPress, you go to um, plugins, search plugins, and then you um, look for SEO plugins. Um, and then you usually have, see Yoast rank math. And I cannot for the life remember the other name of it. I don't know if anybody else can remember it off the top of their head. It's something Weaver, but I've forgotten the, the first name. Um, rank math and Yoast are 
both you can get free versions and the paid versions. I would say stick with the free versions for the moment, because unless you're planning a career in blogging for yourself and others, you don't really need it yet. Um, so, you know, stick to the free for the time being. Um, in, you know, add your plugin into your WordPress website. And then what will happen is every time you create a post, the rank math will be on that side for you and in the top right hand corner. Brilliant, thank you. I put in the chat box because I think, um, sorry, Susanna is, is answered. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, when when I've sort of heard you, people talk about keywords and heard you about sort of almost sprinkling them in, I was thinking that they were just perhaps certain words, you know, the odd word, quite literally the odd word, but it's not, I, I, am I right in thinking? It is actually a phrase, isn't it? it yeah, yes. yes, if you can aim for a phrase, if you are, oh, you weren't here with the, the session. So there's the, there's the short tailed and the long tailed SEO. So the long tail is, so the short tail is cupcakes. You could type in cupcakes into your blog post, like what's your favorite cupcake? But if you want it to rank higher, you've actually got to niche down, okay? So if you then said, what are the best cupcakes for someone with diabetes? Or what are the best cupcakes for children's parties? That becomes what we call a long tail. So therefore you have more likelihood of ranking because even though less people overall may be looking for it, they're looking for something specific and you're then providing it. So you're more likely to rank higher. And I've just got one more really, really basic question, if I may. So apologies that this is so basic. <laughs> Am I right in, I'm going to say it in case anyone else is thinking it. Am I right in thinking that by doing this, when you say your ranking will go up, this means when someone Google searches, you will be higher at the top of the page. So hopefully they click on your website and go to your service. Sorry, I just needed to ask that question. Yeah. To be sure. I would say, and, and I just need to make this really, really crystal clear. You will not jump to the top of Google with one blog post. It just doesn't happen. <laughs> um, you're also competing, remember, against everybody else, large corporations that hire copywriters and bloggers and all that kind of thing. But as long as you get the right keywords in your post, then you can get yourself slowly but surely moving up and solidly. Because the other side of it is, um, you know, and, and it came up when you had a look at rank map, is if you put too many keywords clustered together in a post, the likelihood then is Google goes, uh-uh, that's a bot. That's been written and it's been generated and it's not got a human interaction with it. So we don't like that. So they'll actually penalize you for it. Um, so yes, but slowly but surely, it will get you the consistency of going up the rankings. Lovely, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna to come to Beth. Do you have any questions, Beth? How did you learn to do all this? Are there sort of pointers out there on the websites you can go to if you suddenly get stuck where you can find clues or is this all just trial and error that's got you to Oh, it? Beth, this is seven years of trial and error. And actually, this leads me into something that, that I wanted to share because it, it, for me, I'm a, I am a bit of a geek. Um, I'm self-taught on my website and I'm self-taught on the SEO, um, I'm just geeky because I like to know behind it, you know, how algorithms work and how all that kind of stuff works. Um, but I'm, you know, and I think for a lot of people and all of us when we're running businesses, it's almost like we haven't got the time to go off and find out all this stuff because actually our primary focus is our business. And I think the difficulty comes, how do you, you know, how do you utilize and capitalize on this information? And you've either got to go and pay somebody, and SEO is a lot of money these days, and so is copywriting and blogging. So, I mean, I was looking at copywriting um, costs a couple of days ago, and you're looking up to $400 an hour. Um, so it works out about 378, 380 pounds an hour. 
an hour you know we're not talking a daily rate we're talking hourly rate and and that's because there are people who spend hours upon hours looking up this stuff in order to condense it and distill it in such a way Mm. that it's then passed on to you so um so for me um I like doing this I enjoy it and also I know it's helping the other facets of my business but I'm also keenly aware there are some people who just don't have the time or inclination to do any of this so from my perspective you know my little offer to you guys is oops um if you know you want to have a chat about your SEO if you want to have a chat about blogging and stuff um I'm more than happy to have you know, a conversation with you and then look at how I might be able to help you in future with your own personal stuff. But I would say these are the absolute basics that everybody is using and that you need to have. So it's about practice. If you want to fast track it, obviously I can I can help you with that. So just message me. Okay, so I'm going to come to uh, Karen. Karen, do you have a question? No, no questions. Thank you, Lana. It's really helpful and it is fascinating, though it's not something I think like Lara that, you know, floats my boat massively. And so it's almost like a necessary evil. I do want to understand it. So it's been really helpful. Thank you. Welcome. (laughs) I'm going to come to Suzanne Smart. I know you joined us late, Suzanne, but do you have a question for Lana? No, I don't. I don't. Um, this is something that I've been thinking of doing for a while. Um, and that was, I just need to distill what I've seen tonight and look through my notes, I think. Okay, lovely. Um, so I'm going to come to Suzanne Bernal. What? So Suzanne, do you have a question? Uh, I said for, for once, I, I haven't got a question. <laughs> But Lana, thank you so much because what you've shown us tonight leads on absolutely perfectly from what we got last week. It's almost like last week was seemed overwhelming in a way, but I went through everything in the time I had, went through all the notes. Um, and then it was suddenly, I was looking at how to put it into, um, into action. But what you've given me tonight is like, oh, I kept getting these aha moments like, oh, yes, that makes sense. So thank you, Lana. Brilliant. It's one of those things, once we start, you know, we can, we can hear those, those things like keywords. And then we start thinking, oh, perhaps I better ask, is it one keyword or is it a string of keywords? And yes, I, I know somebody has said where to get them from, but how do you do it? So I agree with you, Suzanne. Tonight has been very much a let's all learn the how to do it because we all want to be found by customers. But do we actually know in real terms what that means if they're going to find us via Google? You know, Google is such a powerful search engine. Well, they're finding your competitors, but they're not finding you if you're not getting that bit right. So for me, it's it's quite a revelation to think I've been doing this wrong because at least now I've got a chance of putting it right and getting it sorted sooner rather than later. So um, I'm going to come to Barbara. Barbara, do you have a question that you'd like to ask Lana? Um, No, I haven't. Um, I think Lara answered a couple of things that I was querying. So that's really good. Thanks, Lara. And thanks, Lana. It's been really, really informative and um, puts a little bit more structure now into um, writing a blog. And I understand it a little bit better now. (laughs) So thank you. I'm going to have to rewatch it again, though, I think. (laughs) So, you know, for me, it's a matter of, you know, we uh, I'm forever doing social media posts and then moving them into a blog, whereas really it would be well worthwhile me starting with a blog and getting this blog really well crafted. Even if I just do one proper blog a week, yeah? And get that ranked really high 
knowing that it's going to hit the, the search engines on Google and, and start almost become known when people start searching for things, they're going to find me as opposed to people going on Google and not finding me. And the feeds on, you know, social media are just being washed through anyway. So I think even if it's just once a week to write a, a proper blog and be seen more professional in, in writing that blog so that we, you know, we do get noticed. And also, you know, when our peers, our professional peers see us putting the effort into actually laying down what we do, I think overall we just come over as far more professional in who we are and what we do and how we're presenting our knowledge. So I'm going to come to you, Debbie. I know we've used you as an example this evening, and thank you for uh, joining in and letting us do that. So do you have a question, Debbie, based on any part of this evening? Well, actually, no questions as such, because I learned so much tonight about the process, great tools that are available, and not to be afraid to look for them, because right now I'm not on my WordPress site because I've got to earn the money to get it live. But it now gives me the impetus to start playing on Google, on the Google Blogger um, thing. But also understanding that it's actually really good not to try and cram all the keywords into the titles and into the, into the headings, because that sort of way you think, oh, I've got to write that, I've got to write this, I've got to write that. And then, and then, of course, that's telling you that it's overloading the process. And that was so useful to learn because I have seen things where it is all in the top there and it's all top heavy. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, with that. But actually knowing that it doesn't have to be, and that maybe just one or possibly two, depending on the question or the heading that you're using, if it's well crafted, it's far better for us. That is gold. And thank you, because this has been such a really comprehensive session tonight. Really enjoyed it, Lana. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I, I just want to Excuse me as your example. Sorry, I just wanted to reiterate, you know, you don't have to think about posting every day. One quality post a week is more than enough to start moving you up the rankings. And you can then take the extract. So like we did last week, where you can get eight out of one, one blog post, eight different aspects of it to go to your social media to help keep boosting and bringing them back to your island. Because if LinkedIn gets taken over by aliens or the network does, and then uh, and LinkedIn decide to retire and just don't want it anymore or sell it off to go compare, you've got nothing. All that stuff you've been putting on LinkedIn is gone because you don't own it. LinkedIn owns it. Whereas if you're putting a post that's saying, oh, come and join me on my island where I'm going to talk to you about the emotional effects of divorce, one click through, boom, they're over on your island and you're in control of all of your content. So we've got a challenge for you now. I know we've got our, our hub that we're doing posts you know, we're boosting each other's posts Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But what we would like to do is convert one of those days to a blog post so that once a week we are blogging a really good piece and sharing that blog in the feed, in the LinkedIn feed. So we're actually doing it backwards one day. What day would suit people? Because we're currently helping one another Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. What would work? So I'm going to come to you, Lara. So what what day do you think would work out of Monday, Wednesday and Friday to get your blog, blog written? Um, I think probably a Monday or a Friday, because then we, you either can look that you've got the whole week to prepare it for Friday or if it's on the Monday, you've got the weekend. <laughs> OK, so I'm going to come to Beth. Beth, when do you think it would be a good day? Lara, I think Monday, so you've got the weekend if you uh, need it there. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to go for a Monday. Does that suit you, Suzanne? Because you're in the hub as well. Yes, Monday is good for me. And Barbara, Monday good for you? Right, yeah. so we're going to go for a Monday. So people who are in that hub, I'd like you to start thinking now by, by 8 o'clock Monday morning, this blog will be written and you'll be highlighting it 
through your social media feed. And after all, you could be highlighting this same blog Wednesday and Friday and taking people back to that blog because you're going to be posting on just an aspect of that blog. Yeah, I love this idea because it's solid. Yeah, it's solid. It's best practice. We're all going to go up on the Google rankings. And um, um, I think more importantly, we're all being taught how to fish doing this stuff. Yeah. And we're can gonna I ask, sorry, can I ask if we're doing the blog on a Monday, can you, what we learned last week about splitting your date ways, different things, can we take portions of that and put it through, say, another day on our Facebook page, yeah. uh, on our website? Yeah. And, and just a portion of it rather than the whole lot. So it's almost like you're getting a new slant. Is that correct, Lana? That's it. Yeah. Oh, good. Just yeah. needed to. Yeah. Yeah. So if you've got if you've got other social media outlets, so it might be that your, your blog post goes up as your your main on Monday morning on your blog. But you may also have a LinkedIn where you've just got a snippet where it's it's just taking perhaps a paragraph of what you've written and you've put that up as a LinkedIn post and saying, if you'd like to see more, click over here and put the link into the blog. On Tuesday, you might have got, you know, a picture on Instagram, which is the featured image because we didn't talk about featured images. You should have a featured image on your blog. And that Instagram post might be the same featured image that you've used on your blog um, with your hashtags, you know, read my blog and, you know, add in the hashtags that are relevant to both the content of the blog and getting them to go over to your blog. You might have a Facebook post then that's a quote attributed to something that you wrote in the, in the blog. So, you, you know, you, you can use it in all sorts of different ways, but it just means it's one content that you can then just move across to all this social media particularly because you know that social media the maximum you're going to get out of it exposure wise is going to be 24 hours because things are moving so quickly so we're going to be busy ladies okay so we're going to be writing the blog for monday it's going to be ready by eight o'clock because you're then going to be pu uh, putting it up on your social media feeds we're going to pick it up via linkedin and start spreading the word yeah gosh we're all going to be world famous we're all going to be world famous. So, um, yeah, so we're going to be busy. So for those people who are in that hub, I'll send them the recording after this evening so that they're up to speed with us and hopefully catch up with everyone. Uh, but I'd like to thank Lana this evening for sharing such amazing insight, skills, techniques, experiences and wisdom. Can we all put our hands together for Lana? Yay! Thank you, Lana. And we'll be back here next Tuesday evening. I can't tell you what it's going to be on. I'll probably have a word with Lana and Lara to see um, where we're going to go with this, but it'll be a progression of what we've talked about. And perhaps during, you know, pre perhaps preparing for Monday, there's something else going to pop up. It could be around, you know, just designing a blog page because we've talked about putting a post together, but we haven't actually talked about this whole blog look that's going to be on the website. So perhaps we'll explore that week so that we're all very clear. We're developing posts, but it sits in almost like a magazine page on your website. So perhaps explore the different formats of how we make them, you know, almost like look like a magazine feature so that when people go to read that post, it looks beautiful as well as it's really informative. So perhaps we'll do that next week then, Lana. Yeah, beautiful blogs because we've looked at the techie part of it, but after all, it's when people come to a page, it's got to be readable, sexy, and all that kind of stuff. So what does one of those looks look like and how can we create them? So we'll do that next week if people are up for it. I'm sure everyone would like to do that. So stay safe, everyone, and uh, look forward to seeing you same place, same time next week, and uh, have a great evening. Cheerio, everyone. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs>